Hello, Dr. Bidijo here. Today we're going to learn how to create an object just like this, where you get full spherical view, uh, by using a point-based alignment in Agisoft Metashape. So I'm going to assume that everybody's already taken their uh, top and bottom pictures and turntable photogrammetry of some sort of object. And what I'm going to show is the workflow. Uh, there will be 10 steps that we work through here in order to process all of the imagery, uh, align the two chunks, merge the chunks, and then rerun the model to get the full view, just like this one here. And we're actually going to use the photos that I took for this model. So let's go ahead and open up Agisoft Metashape. I've already got it open here. Uh, brand new project, that's fine. And we're going to go ahead and bring in our first set of photos. So go to Workflow, Add Photos. And looks like, let's see, here's the one for the demo. We'll pop in our bottom photos first. And we're going to create another chunk right away, add chunk, and do the same thing where we open uh, and add our photos. This time, make sure it's the other set of photos. So you should have the photos that were taken in both uh, sessions here. And so I'm using, again, the marker palettes, which you can get from my website. If you're interested in downloading those, they're very useful. Um, and what we're going to start out doing is getting the computer to detect these markers for both of our chunks, which will help with the alignment, and then we'll actually align them for both chunks, and that'll be our first couple steps. So we'll do that in a batch process. We'll hit Workflow, Batch Process, Add, go in here and hit Detect Markers, right? and we'll do it to all of our chunks, hit OK on the defaults, and then we're going to go to Align Photos. We're OK with these parameters, yes, and make sure that you have Exclude Stationary Tie Points uh, where it says yes, that helps, especially if you're not someone who's using a background while you're doing the turntable work. And we'll let that do its job. All right, looks like our batch process finished here, and this just saves us time and saves us a little bit of clicking, uh, running it all together so that both chunks are completely processed. I'm going to hit close. Um, just to let you know, you don't have to use batch process. You can go chunk by chunk and do the basic workflow uh, yourself, uh, just getting through detecting markers and aligning photos. But don't forget that detect markers is here under tools, markers, detect markers. All right, so the next step here is actually to pull the region tight in on the object. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, and turn off my markers that were detected just so that they're not visually there anymore. Um, and I'm going to start by pulling the region in. So I'm going to resize it. And um, oftentimes in lab with the students, I'll, I'll talk about, you know, you got to choke in the region. you got to make it tighter. Uh, there's reasons for this. It's to save you some time, um, especially with some data sets where there's a lot of extraneous data in the photos. Um, but also for this specifically, you really have to tighten, uh, pull the region in tight so that you're not actually seeing the turntable or the little pedestal that you might be using for the object itself. So go ahead and pull it in all the way. And if you need to, you might actually have to rotate the region a little bit. Uh, in this case, I want to rock it forward just a tad. And then hit the selection tool again so that I can freely spin it around and see if I need to do any other adjustments. Looks like I need to rotate it a little bit this way. And all your region tools are right here under this little button. Uh, and then I'm going to lift it up just a bit so we're hovering right over the turntable. I essentially don't want my turntable to be a part of this model at all. Right. So it should be just above the turntable there. I'm good with the chunk two. I'm going to double click on chunk one and activate it so I can do the same thing here. So again, uh, pull your region in as tight as possible. And on this chunk, I'm going to make sure to cut out this pedestal. So you can see I used a built piece of foam uh, to kind of get this thing to balance on its own and stay uh, steady as I was turning it on the turntable, uh, but I want that foam to be completely cut out uh, with my with where the boundaries of the region is. So, for instance, here, pull it into there, pull that into about there. I'm going to zoom in a little. Let's see, I'm completely cutting out my foam, pretty much. I believe I'm good to go. Right, and then I want to spin it one more time. Hit the selection tool just so I can spin it freely. Yeah, I think there might be some foam in there, so I'm probably going to lift it up a bit more. Right. 
and that should do just fine. Okay, so we got our, our regions tucked in real tight just to the object, and now as for our next step, we're going to do a batch process to get the meshes generated for both of these. And what we're going to do is actually run a low mesh, right? So you have to remove the other steps that you had here. And then we're going to hit add. And we're going to run a mesh from the depth maps on low. Right? So source data, depth maps, low, low. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. And the reason why we're doing this, and we're actually running this mesh on low is because all we want is the basic geometry of the object itself. Uh, we also want to save time. So it's going to take a lot more uh, time to actually run a medium or a high mesh, and we really don't need to do that because we're going to end up running a, a final mesh in the very end. So once the batch process is finished with your, your two chunks here, you're going to have two meshes that were run on low. Uh, and let's go ahead and close this and take a look at them. Click on our visualization tool up here to see just the mesh. And as you can see, you've got a part of the alebrije there. And then on the other side, you have the other part here. And it does look very polygonal, right? You can actually see the triangles. Um, and on both of them, and this is typical for turntable work, you have this like little, little center spool. Uh, something just kind of comes down in the center on both of these, a little bit of extraneous geometry. And we'll get rid of that by using our connected component size tool, which is under model gradual selection, connect the component size, run this up to 99. It selects everything except for the main object, hit delete, and we'll do the same for chunk two. And this is very useful when you have kind of tons of particles just floating out in the 3D space. We'll do the same thing here for this chunk, hit delete, and it should have gotten rid of the little thing that was floating there, which it did. So our chunks are ready. Uh, with these meshes that are running low, and we're going to use those meshes to actually create the masks for each one of these photos. So let's actually go over here to the side pane and take a look at the photos. Um, we'll click on the Show Masks button. You should see No Mask. And you'll right-click any of these. You're going to go to Masks. You'll go to Import Masks. Make sure your method is from model, using the model itself, the mesh. Um, operation Replacement. And if you click on Entire Workspace, it'll do it for every single camera here for both chunks. So we'll hit OK. And what you'll see once you get started is you'll actually see this no mask turn into the masked. Uh, you'll actually see the masks themselves generate. And there we go. You can actually see the little alebrije there uh, being masked or the space around it being masked. All right. So. This should have happened to both chunks. You may want to double check, and there you have it. On this chunk as well, we have our masks prepared, uh, which means we can move on to our next step, aligning our chunks using a point-based alignment. So if we go to Workflow, hit Align Chunks, make sure it says Method Point-Based. Don't worry about having check mark here under Fixed Scale. I would actually leave it unchecked in this case. And then we'll have Accuracy High. Make sure it's on High. Uh, key Point limit, have it on 10,000, that's just, that's just fine. But basically what we're doing here with a point-based alignment is we're going to be using um, our photos to do the alignment for the two different chunks. So originally we were using an alignment on just the photos within a chunk, right? And you did that twice for chunk one and chunk two. But here we're actually going to have the computer try to use the photos from the two different chunks to align the two chunks together. Right? So that's what's occurring. So what we need to do is apply the masks that we just generate, which are pretty awesome masks, um, to the key points, right? So it's only trying to identify features on the object itself, not on the turntable, not on anything else. All right, so that's what we'll do. We'll have apply masks to key points. Let me hit OK. OK, so the alignment has now finished. Um, but we don't know if it worked or not until we actually try to visualize the two chunks together. And that's with this button here, which is Show Align Chunks. So I'm going to click that, and voila. As you can see, the two chunks have aligned to one another. Uh, and there will be places where things don't quite align just right, but those are actually places in the geometry where the data, uh, where the, the actual photos or the angles weren't quite right for that side. So for instance, if I unclick it here, this would have been the chunk where the camera would have probably gotten this angle down in this way. And so this mesh will actually be 
quite true to the actual geometry of the alebrije, uh, but on the other side it's going to be a bit tighter, so you can see that those two things have this extraneous geometry. All of this is fine, as long as the majority of the actual object has actually aligned to itself. And if you look at the cameras and visualize them, you'll see that you have full coverage of the object. And we're going to merge it together now. We're going to rerun it so that we have a third chunk, which is a merged together two chunks, and we can run that to the rest of the through the rest of the workflow. So real quick, let's take a look at our, our masks. Look how tight the computer was able to actually mask our, our imagery just based on the model itself. This is why it works so well um, when you're when you're going to do a point-based alignment on two separate chunks, right? Because it, it knows, you know, it's only going to kind of look in these places for uh, points or key points, anti-points between chunk one and chunk two instead of in this part of the imagery here. So just wanted to kind of take a look at that with you. And again, if you're interested in getting one of these uh, marker palettes here, you can take get it from my website. I'll put that in the description afterwards. Okay, so we're ready to actually merge these. So you go to workflow, you hit merge chunks, chunk one and two, and let's not take anything with us. We'll just merge those two here. Make sure you double click it to activate it, and you'll see them both there merged together, just the alignments, All right? Uh, if you have a bunch of blocks and or regions just sitting here, that's because you still have this uh, this button still depressed. Go ahead and click it again so you get rid of it. And now your job is to take the region um, and kind of pull it in tighter to the object. It doesn't need to be as tight as it was before. It just needs to be so that it's not rendering every single thing. Uh, and it just really needs to be around the object itself. And I always tell people, you know, make sure you're not cutting off any part of the object. Uh, you can cut off the turntables, that's fine, but not the objects. I'm going to be really careful here with the tail. That's the tail here. Uh, and we should be good. I'm going to go ahead and give it one more twirl. Yep. And I'm going to go ahead and run a mesh on high. Now we actually want to actually wait for our, our higher quality mesh. So go ahead and do that. If you want to run it on medium, it'll give you good results as well. But I typically, when I'm running a final model, I'll run it on high. Okay, so once the model's finished, uh, double check and make sure your mesh turned out, which it did. We have it run on high, so you can really see a lot of this uh, more complex morphology or, or geometry that you can see on the surface of the, the alebrije. Um, and we're ready to go ahead and texture. So I'll hit workflow, build texture, and keep it 8192 by 1. Hit OK. And uh, just to let you know, if there is, after you do run the mesh, if there is any extraneous uh, geometry, this is where you would actually go ahead and remove that geometry so you can run the mesh, or excuse me, run the texture and it would just be a complete model. And once the texture is done, uh, we're ready to export our model if we want. Let's go ahead and take a look at our texture. And it looks good. We have a, a full view on this model. It's been all the way around and this was using a point-based alignment. So let's take a quick look at those steps one more time. Um, first, on both of our chunks, we're going to detect the markers and we'll align the photos. Then we're going to make sure we reduce the region and tight on the object, right, so that we don't see the turntable and we don't see the pedestal. Then we're going to run a mesh on low for both the top and bottom chunks. We'll clean the particles away and then we're going to use that mesh, we'll use the model itself to mask. That'll be on the entire workspace to make sure that we have these really great masks masking away everything except for the object in the center. Then we're going to align the chunks using a point-based alignment where we'll actually engage the masks, making sure to use them on the tie points. Then we merge our chunks, and then on our third chunk, on the merge chunk itself, we'll run the mesh on high, ready for the final model, clean up anything if there's anything to clean up, and we'll texture the model. So that's pretty much everything for using a point-based alignment to get a full uh, two chunks to merge together so you get a full spherical view on an object so that in the end you'll have something like this. Thanks for watching.